Clarissa Savoy, and I am here with Inspire. Inspire has been founded and created to bring an opportunity for artists uh, to have an opportunity to give back to our, our young people. It's open to all ages, but really an opportunity for me to bring great artists and help our students and our young people appreciate the arts and then giving them an opportunity to ask questions. So even throughout this time, this is an opportunity. It's not necessarily a performance. It's a showcase. It's an opportunity to, to dive in, to ask questions and just have an opportunity to be up close front and center with people that are doing various different things within the music industry. So uh, we will be hosting series ongoing. It's not a one-time event. This is something that we will continue to host. If you or someone you know have information or have something that they are doing very well in and would like to share with others, we would definitely love to host and share that information with them, uh, with some of our young people. Um, so we are so excited today. We have the symphony group. We have the symphony group who will be um, with us and our founder of the symphony group is Mariah. I am so excited. I had the pleasure of meeting Mariah actually just probably um, a little under a year ago, maybe. Uh, she may have the exact time frame for that. But uh, just a little bit about Mariah. The Symphony Group is a Black-owned, nonprofit entertainment company in Dallas-Fort Worth area. We provide entertainment services to local artists, musicians, and businesses by providing a platform for them to showcase their talent, increase their exposure, and grow their brand. We are unique because of the way that we serve the community. One of our main goals is to provide fine art opportunities to youth in underserved areas. Our owner, owner, Mariah Hansen, is a local music educator. She has always had passion for education, the arts, and entertainment. The Symphony Group has allowed her to bring a vision to life utilizing all three of those areas. So we have, and so excited, to present to you the Symphony Group Mariah. Hello, hello, hello. Um, hi, how you doing? Um, I am so excited to be here. So I want to say thank you to Clarissa and Classic Mu Classic Music Studios for having us. And then I have um, Terza on the call too. She works very heavily with the Symphony Group, um, especially recently and within the past few months. So she's kind of seen like, um, you know, all the hard work and kind of like what goes into everything that's, you know, um, just really like what it takes to be in the industry and it is really a lot so i'm just so happy to share like our trials and tribulations our successes um and just our goals and anything that you would like to know about the music business of course like there's no, not one person that knows it all of course there's um going to be failures and successes in your music career but um I'm just here to tell you, like, you know, give you a testament that if you do put in hard work and if you make those connections and you continue to network, that you can really get to the level that you want to. And of course, it's going to take some dedication and hard work. But of course, with hard work, anything can happen. So we'll just get into right into what is the symphony group? Who, what is it about? How is it founded? How did it get started? Okay, so um, I started the symphony group in March of 2018, um, to be honest, eight, no, sorry, 18, yeah, 18. So um, I was working as a high school band director and I really did, was not really enjoying my job a ton. Um, I enjoy the kids and the students that I work with, but I just didn't really like the whole atmosphere. I was spending a lot of time at work. Um, and I actually went to school with my undergraduate degree. I majored in music business. Um, and about, you know, two years into my career, I was like, 
I just cannot see myself doing this for the rest of my life. Um, I was at work like, sorry. I was at work like 70 hours a week, um, like all the traveling. And then I actually started pretty early as like I had to be a high school band director. It's like most people kind of start that job maybe in their late twenties or maybe early, early thirties, or it's, it's something like they wanted to do like ever since they started college. It was kind of like a stepping stone for me. And that was not the job for me to have as a stepping stone. That's a job that you want to have like for the rest of your life. You're building up your career. You want it to grow. That's something that you want to do. And for a long term, I found out really quickly, long term, that wasn't for me. So I was like, what can I do to make my dreams come true, really? But I really didn't have a ton of cash. I knew I wasn't going to be going to LA, wasn't going to go to New York or Atlanta. It just, my life wasn't set up that way. So I just was like, let me start it, let me do it. Um, So I was like, I know I wanted to offer, initially it was just going to be an artist management company. And what I came to find out is shortly after I started my artist management company, I had a mentor who told me, you know, artist management takes a lot. Um, You have to supply a lot of things. You have to be there for the artist financially. You have to offer a lot of things like you are the representative of, of the artist. And I wanted to be that, but my schedule didn't really allow that. So I was like, what else can I do? So I kind of turned it into booking with me just being the liaison between the business. Well, I'm kind of like, you know, third party. So you have the business and you have the artists. And then the Symphony Group would be in the middle kind of booking, you know, those two. And it was kind of like not much conversation between the two. So um, that's kind of where the booking aspect came from. And then as we develop more and we increase our content and then we increase our social media presence we decided to offer artist development because we kind of knew what exactly it was taking to be artists in the Dallas Fort Worth area um, what people were looking for and things of that nature so of course I'm an educator my main thing is like I want to give back to the kids especially like fine arts opportunities you know oftentimes in underprivileged areas we're talking about underprivileged there's not many Caucasian kids, white kids, and underprivileged areas is mostly black and Hispanic kids. So these are the kids, you know, that kind of don't have the opportunity to take the lessons that we really want or to have the funds to. But as we know, being a black person, you have a ton of talent and it's like a natural talent. We're natural born with these things. But when it comes like to competing at a higher level, it's like you don't have those resources that other kids had who have been taking lessons since they were maybe six or seven years old or you know even in sixth grade but by the time they get to college it's like you know they're so much better technique wise they know a lot more things but you have just a natural talent just think about what you would have had if you would have had the opportunity to have those lessons so it's not essentially I wanted to just provide lessons when I say fine arts opportunities that could be you know um a DJ coming in teaching the kids, you know, the essentials on how to how to DJ. An artist coming in teaching the kids, you know, the essentials of painting. Um, theater, maybe a theater, somebody coming in and ask, you know, teaching a workshop on drama and what drama is, you know, just to have our kids embrace who they are and embrace their RC side because oftentimes when you grow up um, in the Black community or in minority communities, you always hear like, fine arts is not going to make you no money. Mm-hmm. art's not gonna do this art's not gonna do that I know remember myself like when I was majoring in music my family kind of thought I was a failure because it was like why you choose music out of everything like you're supposed to go and be a doctor but I was literally telling a story the other day like I literally tried everything like basketball shot put in discus volleyball all those things and it just was a fail <laughs> but the minute I tried something like music related it was like ta-da like it was uh-huh. natural so I like found my thing. So that's kind of like all like where the symphony group has came from. So we started out like we just hosting little events around the community. Uh, we used to have something called the jam, which featured like it was open mic night that featured different um, artists around Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, we've hosted events at different venues around Dallas Fort Worth area. We put on different live concerts. Um, and I'm just going to share my screen just a little bit. So you can just kind of see exactly so what we do and kind of who we are this is our instagram page it kind of encompasses a lot of 
things that we have done. Um, you can literally go all the way back to the beginning and it will show you kind of like it has a booking the artist management we offered a scholarship this year um our most current project that we did under this exact um under in the summer it was um our symphony stars product project where we actually featured and hosted um these artists we had carrington um we provided them a live virtual concert. We managed the social media for um, a month and we just provided different exposure for them. And we also work with Cypher Fix. Um, he's definitely a popular artist in the Dallas Fort Worth area, if you've never heard of him. Um, and it's just a little bit of everything. So I want to share um, one of the artists that we um, that was featured during our jam session. It was uh, sometime last year um, her name is Ruby Miller she's the artist out of the DFW area and this is her original song Breathe uh, featuring Devontae Thornton which you may have heard of him as well share a little bit of something that was produced uh we had a hella black hella proud virtual concert so we know we're in the midst of a pandemic right and live music used to be a huge thing for dallas and it was i would say it has definitely grown over the last few years definitely five to ten years and within this last year it's been so many different live music venues that have popped up live music concerts it's just a big thing but we all know covid kind of you know, made that much smaller. So um, we know the versus battles got really popular. So we came up with the idea to have a virtual concert. And this is where our two feature artists had an entire set. This was actually produced by our house videographer, which is Audi Visuals. So um, it was hosted by Nina. Um, she is actually a artist on K104. Um, well, you know, she's a radio personality on K104 had um, Kevin K Cook Music. Uh, he is actually the guitarist that featured Carrington or assistant Carrington. Um, so we'll just watch a little bit of their, just, just a, a little brief little part of the performance. Yeah. 
just a little bit of Carrington. Um, and then we'll go into a little bit of Slife Fix. We just want to take this up. <laughs> So when you look at it like you understand what's going on, you gotta understand like this is one of the most scariest things we have in the method as a nation is that people are understanding we won't get through it. Go. Go. Listen, I'm standing in. today but of course we don't have time for all that so if you want to uh view this it's on youtube you can look up uh the sister group hella black hella proud uh virtual concert and you can see the entire thing uh on top on top of us talking about um we had little interludes between and we we're just discussing you know the importance of like what black lives matter is the import importance of this concert um all the artists, they, they both all picked songs that were like important to our culture. And, you know, m music is inside of us as, as people. And, you know, we use music ever since a long, long, long time ago to help get us through trying times. And I think that just speaks a testament to who we are as a people. Um, yeah, so I'll stop sharing my screen for now. Um, so we can talk a little bit about technique and just you know some things more of like what you should be doing like for, as you're performing on a stage when you are looking to engage your audience you know um it's really important to have crowd participation get to know who your audience is maybe try to do if you are working a live venue and you don't know much about the venue of course always do your research on that venue what type of people come to that venue it might not be the people that your set your like music set might um that you normally do it might not appeal to that particular set so make sure that you are really doing your research on who what when and where a lot of different uh live music venues in dallas they have different nights so monday night might be for um this crowd of people tuesday night might be r&b night wednesday night so if you went on a Tuesday, but you're performing on a Friday, that crowd could look completely different. So be sure that you're keeping that in mind when you are booking those performances. If you don't have a manager and you're booking these things yourself, be sure to always get things in writing, always get a contract. Um, you know, when you are sending messages is always proof. But if you are there, if they are always trying to talk on the phone, they never respond to the messages and never respond to an email, you want to kind of, that's going to kind of raise a red flag because if that's happening, that's, that means like they're not really engaged in what's like going on and they're not really holding their end of the back bargain if they're not responding to your things in writing. So not saying that everybody has a busy schedule, but at the same time, if you're consistently asking them, about something and they're not following through with it you just might want to do your research on that person and who you're working with I and think course, you know like to have a good um 
to have a you don't have to have a good standing working relationship with the people that you work with but always remember like a first impression is key that if you show up late if you are you know maybe under the influence or not at your best you need to be transparent with that um with the person that you're working with or with that being you just letting them know hey i don't feel well today or i might be a little sick just let them know this might not be your standard or you know just be transparent in a sense that you want to be you want them to be open with you about things that are going on and you should be open as well so mariah um, you've been given some really good information um we would like to have a little bit of dialogue um because we we've seen a little bit about what you do and the videos were great um and an opportunity before we go further we can continue to go further with we'll just kind of take a pause and see if there's any kind of conversation because i think the last point you made was really good um some people especially musicians sometimes can just kind of be oh just kind of go with the flow and when you're looking at the business aspect of it that's a very important piece that you mentioned. Um, so is there any conversation or questions? Yeah, please feel free to drop your conversation. And if you if you don't, if you can't have your camera on right now, put it in the chat. Um, if you have any questions, you wanna have a conversation about or talk about an experience that you had or experience that you might think you may have rent or you might run into. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, you may have a little bit more to add to that, the professionalism from both ends, making sure you have things in writing um, versus kind of being a little leery. It's like, hey, we're not ever responding to a text or an email and things like that. So um, now you are in the music business and there's a lot of things that we hear as far as a reputation. Mm -hmm. um, and some of these things are not so good. So just to kind of prepare and the realistic aspect of maybe some young person that may be listening, some of the positives, but also some of the things to be aware of, and maybe a personal situation that you faced uh, since you've been in the business. Yeah, for sure. So we can talk just a little bit about um, our, the things that we've ran into, our trials and tribulations, as I like to call it um so of course being tr fully transparent you know like when you start off at first this industry is not going to make you a ton of money um you have to know that you have to continuously work hard you may have to do a lot of free shows you might have to um open up for a few people you're gonna have to do a lot of I say moving and shaking like hey how you doing like you know, I'm this person, this is what I do. Okay, move to the next event, you know, or go to the next venue the next night. It was a point in time where we were going out several nights a week to live music things, just trying to feel things out. We would go out on a Tuesday. We would go out on a Wednesday. We would go out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Sunday to all the live music things going on, just to familiarize ourselves with what the city has to offer what what type of bands um and artists that the people are booking you know so if i say i want to book you for an event and i try to book you for um sandaga so sandaga we know like is the older crowd most of the time it's 25 plus 30 plus and some nights 40 plus so it's just like if i set you up and i say you know hey we're booking this gig for you and you go in there and you sing like all cardi b and like you know what i'm saying all um her songs they might know like one or two but it's not that you're not a talented artist but you're not if you're not appealing to that crowd then they're gonna say oh well she can sing but i don't really like her stuff you know so be sure that you're checking out your venues before and really knowing like the type of scenes that the live music scenes that dallas has um so everybody is not going to be so friendly and it's kind of like it's Dallas is huge, but the live music circle is like kind of like this. Um, so I met Clarissa, like she said, like about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and we were talking about the same people, you know, and some of the people that have been around for a long time who are still in the live music industry. And 
to be honest, there's a few extra people that are still like, you know, sprinkled in. But those same people that have been on the scene 10, 15 years are still very much so a big part of the live Dallas music, the live music scene in Dallas. So it's like when you come and do something, say like, this is a really big thing. Like I say, I own a, I own a record, you know, I own a, a entertainment agency and I'm introducing myself as Mariah. I own this. I want to work with you, blah, blah, blah. It's like some people like side eyeing me, you know, look at me like, oh, what is this young girl? No, like she don't know anything, super gullible and things like that. So it's like, you have to really prove to people that they're, that you actually know what you're talking about. You're a hard worker. And you can't, sometimes you can't listen to that, like all that negative energy, because if you let, if you listen to those things, then it's going to prevent you from being the artist that you want to. You only need one, like one person take a chance on you. You may get a thousand no's, but that one yes could change your career. So don't let those no's discourage you because that one yes could be the manager you need to meet. That one yes could be the person who's going to book you to open up for these next artists. So it, what I'm trying to all sum up and say, like, it's going to be difficult to kind of get your name in the door, but you got to continue to smile. You got to continue to act like you wear, don't wear your emotions on your face. Okay. And try to remember like a phrase that somebody taught me um, about 10 years ago is that it's not personal, it's business. You know, like it's when you're in the music industry, it's not personal, it's business. So that's how you have to think about get going into these situations. It is not anything personal, it's business. So if somebody make you mad, if somebody come at you the wrong way, it's a lot of shady stuff that goes on in the entertainment industry, just in general, because it's a small niche, like to make, it's a niche market. So it's not your retail industry. You can't go and spend thousands and thousands of dollars. Even like hair is a part of like retail. If you're buying, getting your hair done, a service industry, we know the service industry has been growing and there's still room to grow, but the entertainment industry isn't like it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So just know that not everybody's going to want to be your friend. Everybody's going to want to give you an opportunity, but that person that don't focus on those people who aren't giving you those opportunities. Those aren't the people in your circle. And that one or two or three opportunities opportunities that come around that you do say yes to those same people are going to circle back and want to work with you so if they do rub you the wrong way still leave a positive image in their mind um because that's going to make or break it it could be a test you know is this person this is this person that um oh I, I said this to her and she is still positive you know so just don't get don't get easily discouraged it's not super easy because Dallas is not a music city as as much as you would say LA Atlanta or New York it's a little bit smaller so think about the competition is like even you know bigger to perform at these venues um yeah so that was I hope that answered your question (laughs) (laughs) right so the music business definitely has a lot of um pros and cons. And I think we hear a lot about more of the negatives. So I know you mentioned about making sure you kind of handle things in a business. What is the benefit of having someone like you to do versus someone that may, you know, have aspirations? So what are the things that a booking agent or a management company can provide for someone that doesn't realize all of the ins and outs that's necessary and a lot of the things that go behind the behind the scenes sometimes we don't even know kind of bring some of that to light things that go on behind the scenes for someone that may be clueless on what it takes to put a show together and what it takes to start from step a to step b to the finished product and then they can see the value of having a management company or a booking company can you shed some light on that yeah, for sure. So, you know, when um, you, at, I mean, you the person when you're starting out as an artist, very few of us, if you're starting out at a young age, if you don't have like parents or somebody who's already been in the industry, you kind of go into it very naive. And like what that manager or booking agent is going to do, they've already familiarized their self with contracts. They already familiarize themselves with the amount of payment they already know like when somebody's calling like bs as we'll call it like when they're just like oh we want you to go here want you to perform here but they don't have no money you know or like we can pay you this but they don't follow through 
um, they already know how to recognize those people who are not necessarily meant to be in your circle. But the biggest thing is the negotiation. They are going to be your liaison. They're going to be like your mom or dad in the industry. Essentially, they're going to represent you. They're going to be a representation for you. They're going to speak for you. However, they're always going to have your back. They're always going to have your best interest in mind. But with you doing, cutting out that middleman, it's just you and whoever that you book with, right? The, the, The venue, you and the other person who may be performing with you so it's like they might not have your best interest in mind they have their best interest in mind so you have to remember that sometimes some people can say a lot of good things they don't really follow through with them and if you're just new in the industry and you kind of need to navigate then that booking agent or that manager is going to help you navigate through different avenues on how you can successfully get started Um, without it costing a ton of money, you know? So you have to be fully transparent in what you're wanting from your agent or your um, your manager. You need to be fully transparent and like, my main goal is to do this, main goal is to do that. And find somebody who can work with what your budget has and kind of work with you because if they believe in your talent, if you don't have a super large budget, they might still be willing to work with you. So don't be afraid to reach out even if you don't have a ton of money and um aside from just navigating it's going to be those connections so if i know the booking agent or the manager of this live venue then i can say oh hey i have so and so they want to be they want to perform can we get on your schedule you know sometimes when you reach out to different venues and different things like hey i'm a new artist i'm wanting to do this you know how many emails they get saying i'm new artist saying they want to do this they want to do that but if they already have that connection, it's automatically, okay, like send us the info, we'll, we'll put you on the calendar. So it's more of, it kind of cuts out that long wait and that learning curve because you have somebody that's going to be feeding you hand by hand, like that information. I know that there are um, just different there are different avenues that can happen, like in the music business, there's not, you 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 just don't have to be an artist or you don't have to be a performer. You can be several things. Like what about the people who are the stage hands? What about the people who produce the music? What about the people who um, are the creatives behind the music videos? What about the people who are consistently um, managing the musicians' social media? the content creators, the people who are making the music playlists. Like 10 years ago, people would not, they did not have jobs to make playlists or curate music. But that's a uh, Facebook, Spotify, all these people, they hire for those particular things, a music curator. You're cr- creating playlists for a certain genre of music. You know, if you grew up in, um, like me, I grew up in, my mom, oh, we always listen to older music, you know, way before my time. So I know a lot of songs from the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know? And so you could be the same person too. There's not just one avenue to the goal that you wanna reach. So you have to consistently figure out if I can't take this straight road, you may have to have like, you know, different little points you got to hit. But if that still end up in the middle, or what if you say, I want to be a performer, right? And you start performing and you're like, uh-uh, I can't do this. But what if you are like, okay, I really like composing this music or I really like helping the artists write their lyrics. I'm a songwriter. What if that's your real talent that you feel comfortable with? Because several of us know that we're talented in several different ways, but we don't always know how to utilize that. So it doesn't matter like which road you take to get to it. Just like think about dollars in 635 and 35 and 67. It's like one big circle, right? So you can take several of these highways and still get to the point that you need to get to is several different ways you can take. So you just have to figure out which way that you're taking, which exit are you taking to get to your point? And that kind of brings me to, I brought on a guest. Um, Her name is Terza. And she is actually really doing very, very well when it comes to voice acting. And I just want her to talk just a little bit about like what exactly voice acting is and kind of the road that she took to get there. And maybe just about, you know, the things that you experienced um, and how did you get to where you are now or or to a realization? Because I know that you're really happy with your position 
and um, you're really happy where you are right now and you feel like, you know, this, this is it for you. Yeah, so everybody, my name is Terza. Um, so I definitely started off playing instruments as a musician. Um, I started off as someone who plays oboe, saxophone, you know, flute. I was in the band from fifth grade all the way up until my sophomore year in college. I majored in music for two years. Um, I knew pretty early on that music was my passion and that I wanted to do music in life. Like I wanted to do something in the music industry. Um, just like Mariah said, people say that, you know, music doesn't make any money. You should become a nurse or anything like that. But that wasn't something I was passionate about. So um, I majored in music for two years at um, University of Texas at Arlington. Um, I love the music program there. I learned a lot, but it, it is very, very hard. People don't tell you how hard it is to be a music major. Um, it's like nine, like a whole, like nine classes. I used like one credit hour. You have to take lessons, you know, be in band, do, do recitals. And then you have to, you know, test yourself on your scales and everything, like every semester. It's very strenuous, not even just physically strenuous, but like mentally strenuous on you. Um, so. I couldn't really tell you if you could make it through uh, being a music major. Some people do, um, but I chose to take a different avenue. So I went from UTA. I just chose to do an online degree there, and I started taking classes at Cedar Valley. And they have um, classes where you can learn to do the behind the scenes music. You can use, learn to produce, use Pro Tools, and um, record live instruments and stuff like that. So while I was taking classes at Cedar Valley, they had a class called um, Commercial Recording Techniques. And we basically had to write our own commercials and um, participate in our own classmates' commercials by acting in them. And while I was doing that, I kind of found out that I actually liked acting in commercials a lot more. Um, and I also thought about writing jingles for commercials, you know, how you hear like the different jingles and stuff like that, it's kind of behind the scenes. And um, while I was taking that class, I saw all the different avenues you could take. Um, so I did some research and I found a, a studio in Dallas that does um, voice acting classes and it's called Voices Carry. And so what we do is we get different scripts every week and then we um, rehearse them. He gives us tips on how to make our acting better. Um, and they also record demos for you once you get to that point. Um, but the way that voice acting and music kind of relate is the the behind the scenes aspect. So like the pro tools and the editing part like that. Um, when you voice act, you have to do everything pretty much yourself. So you'll have to record your own vocals, um, record your script until it gets good and edit it on pro tools or anything like that. Edit it down, edit out your breaths, um, edit out your mistakes. So you have to learn how to use it just like a musician would have to if they're recording a song. It's kind of the same, same exact thing. Um, so once you feel comfortable doing voice acting, you'll have to record a demo, of course. Um, and then once you have your demo, you'll find an agent, just like Mariah is a booking agency, you'll have to find an agent that will book your auditions. So you can audition for different things, different genres of voice acting. So um, you have audio books, you know, on like um, iTunes, you can listen to audio books. That's a form of voice acting. Um, if you ever hear radio commercials, that's a form of voice acting. If you see uh, commercials on TV, that's voice acting, voicemails, like press one. If you wanna talk to the doctor, press two, that's all voice acting. Um, inside of stores, when you hear things, that's voice acting, animes. Um, so I know you see like Disney cartoons and stuff like that, where they have to act and also sing. Um, Cause I know Disney's big on, you know, musicals and stuff like that. So it's, it's all one big circle to me, music and acting and art is just all one big thing. Um, so when I, I feel like you don't know the path that is going to lead you until you get there. Because when I started off, I really thought I was going to do music in the background of music. Um, but you know, you never know where that path's going to take you. I'm grateful that I, I went to Cedar Valley and I stopped taking the music program at, at UTA and I started doing the behind the scenes of music because I still got a degree from UTA. Um, recently, actually this summer, I graduated from UTA. And I still got a certificate from Cedar Valley in, in uh, recording techniques. So I know how to do all the background stuff of music. So if I didn't leave UTA, I wouldn't have, wouldn't be where I'm at right now, knowing how to do voice acting and knowing how to do all the editing and stuff with Pro Tools. So I feel like a big lesson is that um, you have to go where life takes you. If you don't feel comfortable or feel like that, um, where you thought you were gonna be, 
you don't feel comfortable where you're at, then it's okay for change. Change is good sometimes. And um, I think that's something that everybody can learn from. And yeah, I feel like if people are um, interested in voice acting, it's definitely something you can do. Um, you can do it from home. So it's easy for you to work another job and do your recording at home. It's easy, just have a mic and then uh, something to edit. And then you can just edit your own vocals. You can get paid from just doing things at your house. So it's very versatile. And like I said, there's all those different genres of it. So I feel like anybody could do voice acting. Um, so yeah, that's me. I'm trying to get into the industry. Um, I think that Voices Carry Studios is very good if you're looking for somewhere to do voice acting. Um, they have different days. So you can do Monday nights, or you can do Saturday mornings or Wednesday nights. Um, whatever fits your schedule. So I really recommend them if anybody that's listening is interested in voice acting. Awesome. Awesome. That's really unique. And I'm glad you talk about some of the things that we don't see. I know most children and kids automatically see what's up front and center. Right. And so really taking the time to break that down and give examples, you know, cartoon care. I mean, all of that is mm -hmm. full of, um, people behind the scenes and we don't get to see their faces, but they're just as important to the success of Disney and any of the other programs. So I'm glad you brought that up. It's a really, really a good idea, really good concept, fun. Um, so thank you for sharing. Of course. Thank you for having me guys. Thank you so much again. Okay, so I know we're kind of starting to wrap up we have a, just a little bit more to talk about just as in regards to like copyright and um the mechanical and performing rights so and then after that we can go that that's kind of it right yeah what was this? i mean that that is an option because sometimes um some of the technicalities we can say some young people don't even realize, you know, what does it mean, copyright? You know, they may have seen the word, some people have, some people have, it just depends on the level of their exposure and which is something Inspire is here to do. Not only expire, but inspire, but expose, expose our young people to information that they may not get. So yeah, if you can talk about that a little bit, that would be great. What is copyright? Is that a big deal if I want to sing somebody's song? Is that, you know, is that okay? How do you, what's the work around with that? Um, oh, I heard this song. It inspired me and now I have a tune and I want to record it. But is it your song? Do you have the right to record it? Um, just maybe I'll share a little bit about how that works. Okay, so I'll just start off by sharing like the basic definition, you know, copyright is the exclusive legal right given to the originator or assignee to print, publish, perform, film, or um, record any type of artistic or music material or authorize others to do so. So broken down, what does this mean? So that means if I hear Beyonce song and I want to perform Beyonce, I have to have the legal rights to do that. If I don't have those legal rights and Beyonce sees me singing her song, if she wanted to, she could pursue or seek legal action because I did not get the permission to use her song. Where is this, when is it okay to sing somebody else's song? When it comes to live music, when you're performing live, you can always perform somebody else's work. It, when it's recorded and resold or sold for a profit, that's when it becomes a problem. So say I like, um, a song is always Drake is always getting samples right so let's use Drake for example or a song that you might have known um like Beyonce use Beyonce uses like the breakdown of Candy and her um before I let go and also she before I let go on top of that right so she had to ask Frankie Beverly and Mays in order like can we use a sample of your song in my song? And they have to say, okay, yes, you can, but we're going to charge you this much to do so. Or after maybe as many times as it played, they might charge her, you know, that amount might charge you 20 cents, like every time that it's played or something like a royalty or something of that nature. So if you're doing live music, you really don't have a ton of things to worry about because as long as it's performed in a live setting, you're good. 
Um, but like when you are making a sample or singing over it, even with your own words and trying to sell it or putting on Apple Music or anything like that, you have to be very careful. It, are the like record police going to come and get you more than likely? No. But you know what's going to happen one day. Maybe that artist is not as big or maybe somebody else sampled somebody else's song and they didn't tell them. And they find it and you sampled it too, you know, and you have it in your music and you're trying to sell your album and it's on Apple Music. And that's when it's a big part. You can get sued a lot of money for just not doing your research. So be sure if you are going to sample a song or if you like something to you know, do your research on what you need to do to contact. Most of the time you have to contact their manager or their record label or their company, send an email, ask for permission, and they'll get back to you as soon as they can, saying like, yes, you can, or no, you can't, sorry. So of course, bigger artists are like, it's a harder time to get to sample their things, but smaller artists, no. And most people might do it for free. Um, as far as performing rights, I found a BW, B, BMI, a uh, link that I want to share with you. I'm going to drop it in the chat. Uh-oh. Hold on. Oh, oh, is it? Will it pull up still? Mm -hmm. okay. It's there. Okay, so great. Um, So it's just talking about what the difference between performing rights, royalties, and mechanical royalties are. It's like so many different things and this is a great resource to have. Also, if you're not registered like with organization like BMI or ASCAP, CAP, register with them as a songwriter, register with them um, as a creator. BMI is. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to put you on the spot, I'm sorry. Well, no. let's, let's say what about the whole process of registering? You know, what is that? And you know, cause we kind of sometimes throw out terms and Okay, so um, I'll share my screen and we're just gonna go to the BMI website. As you can see here, it's just gonna say like, what is the BMI and like what they do. So, you know, it was, it's a music rights organization. So in the US and it's still nurturing new talent and new music, but they operate on a nonprofit basis. And what they basically do is protect the public performances of their music. Um, with songwriters and um, publishers if I'm publishing music. So what do we do? They bridge the gap between songwriters and businesses and organizations that want to play their music publicly. You know, they serve as an advocate for the value of the music and they represent several people. So it'll talk about their role just a little bit. Um, they support songwriters, composers, publishers, and taking care of important aspects of their careers. So getting paid. So basically, if you perform, you go and perform your song, you register with B. If you are registered with BMI, they will actually pay you for performing your song. But the live music venue has to be registered with BMI or ASCAP or some type of music performing music rights organization. All right, is very simple to become a member. You can literally just go to BMI or ASCAP and it'll ask you like if you want to join as a songwriter or if you want to join as a publisher. You can oftentimes do both. I am a publisher under BMI. And so you basically, it's, it's a five-year agreement for the publisher, two-year agreement um, for the songwriter. And so it's just like, if you write, if you write in songs for people, write your own songs, literally register with them, register those songs with, uh, BMI or ASCAP, any organization you choose to go with. Anytime that you perform those songs, you will be able to get paid. So that's just a little bit about performing rights, the organizations that you need to know about and put yourself in touch and in tune with. Um, just to be able to um, get yourself paid. And so be sure when you perform at these places, like, are y'all registered with these people? Like, do y'all have, because it's like when you perform your song, if they're not registered with BMI, it's like, did you really perform your song? Or sorry, like we can't do anything for you. So it's just a small fee. I think for songwriters, it may be like 25 or $50. And think about it for two years, that over two years is literally less than a dollar a month. So you got to think about the value over that time. Awesomeness, awesomeness. All right. So Mariah, you've, I mean, you've given some good information. Um, 
there could be a wide range of um, exposure to the music business. And um, there are some things that you just kind of bump up into, you know, that, that happens a lot. You don't have anyone to tell you what to do, how to do, how to pave the way. Um, so just having someone like you share some of the things to be aware of hey, make sure you do this. Hey, look out for this so that you don't necessarily have to necessarily hit all of the bumps in the road so you can be prepared um, ahead of time. But we're going to go ahead and wrap up. If there are not any questions, we'll see if there are any questions. You can even put it in the chat. Um, yes, put your question in the chat. And if you happen to hear or see this later and you have questions, you can always contact email uh, at classymusicstudios at gmail.com. And Mariah, you can share your information. Thanks so much. Um, Shaylin, right? I've seen you perform often and you are so amazing. So it's so great to see you. Yes, Shaylin is so amazing. And um, hopefully we will have a feature soon. So just continue to look out yes, um, okay. for our future events and postings with Inspire. Okay, so then we have uh, Mariah, if you have questions, maybe something that comes up later, she can be reached at the symphony group at gmail.com. Yes. So follow us on Instagram, right? Um, the Symphony Group, yes. Facebook, the Symphony Group. Yes. <laughs> for, <laughs> for future events. And I want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, and I would like to say and close out with uh, we inspire youth and children and people to explore the world of music. Thank you all and have a good day. <laughs>